Hi everyone, Tatiana is here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I've prepared something for you about planning and self-management when you are learning the best. Let's break down how you can approach your practice effectively. Of course, it's always really beneficial when you can have a teacher or a kind of a mentor who can guide you. These days people often find teachers online, but the lessons still need to be personalized for you. If an offline or online personal teacher isn't an option for you for some reason, you can try the online courses. There are quite a few online, you can search for them, you can find them, you can read the recommendations and reviews and decide if they are good enough for you. Many of them allow you to progress at your own pace, which is pretty good, but usually they don't give you feedback about your techniques. Number one, set realistic goals. When you're starting out, it's crucial to have achievable goals. What can it be? You can, for example, write a set list for yourself and learn one song a week or more or less. It depends on how you feel about it and how much time you have. Or you might aim to learn one new scale on the bass each week until you learn them all, or master one favorite bass line from a song. Celebrate these milestones. When you are enjoying the learning process, you can embrace every small victory. Actually, this is a really, really cool feeling when you couldn't do something and now you feel like you can. These days we have social media and you can share it online with your friends that you've learned something new this week, your goals achieved so cool. <laughs> Little celebrations keep you motivated and make your learning enjoyable. Don't rush into playing complex solos or perfecting advanced techniques straight away. I remember when I was entering a jazz college, I needed to pass some technical exams playing on the bass, and I chose some solos of Jacob Astorius to learn, and I clearly wasn't ready to play the solos. <laughs> I would say that I didn't play them well, I just played somehow. <laughs> I passed those exams and I got accepted, but I think not because I played well, but probably because the examiners thought that it, that was a good effort trying to play those solos. I clearly I really wasn't ready to play Jacob Astorius solos, and that goal wasn't realistic for me. Start with simpler songs and exercises. It's better to play a simple part and enjoy it with a good sound than to play a difficult one, struggling and rushing and producing sound just somehow. If or when you are ready for more advanced parts, you will come to it eventually. But for most people, you don't have to be a virtuosic player to get pleasure. Number two, create a consistent practice routine. Consistency is a key. It's better to practice for 10 minutes a day than to cram a few hours once a week. Find a time that fits your schedule and stick to it. This helps build muscle memory and keeps your progressing steady. There are some tips from the book Atomic Habits. This is a good book, I recommend it. If you want to make daily practice a new habit for yourself, first make it obvious. Your instrument shall be visible and accessible, not in a bag and maybe even in the middle of your room. Second, make it easy. You need to know when you start practicing. For example, right after dinner every day or when you're back from the gym or it's up to you. You should just know yourself when you do this. Number three is interesting. Make it attractive. You should know exactly what you are getting pleasure from when you are playing the best. If you think about it honestly, you can find your true motivation sometimes really surprising. For example, it can be the initial moment of the low sound when you just plug it in and start playing. Or it can be a nice time spent with your friends who play with you, or even a bottle of beer after that. <laughs> or it can be a feeling of the fresh night air on your face when you finish your practice and go home. If you are honest with yourself about it, you can find out why actually you want to keep playing and progressing as a musician. I'm for the conscious approach. And fourth, make it satisfying. You can have a chart or a calendar on the wall where you tick off the days when you practice and cross every goal achieved. This motivates, but if the chart or calendar on the wall doesn't look good to you, you can try something different, for example, a practice journal. Write down what you worked on each day and what worked well and what you think didn't. This doesn't only help you stay organized, but also allows you to track your progress over time. 
Next point, focus on technique and timing. Developing good technique and a sense of time is very important, especially for beginners. So make sure that exercises for that are in your plan. Practice scales, arpeggios and simple exercises to develop your finger strength and dexterity. Use a metronome to improve your timing. This will make playing with the other musicians much easier down the road. The next point is connecting with others. I mean the other musicians who you play with and those who you don't play with and of course the other best players. You can talk about your challenges and be understood. You can share your tips, tricks, experiences, opinions, everything you can share and discuss and it's always good. If you don't have anyone around straight away, you can try to find like-minded people in a club or a pub uh, if there are some regular gems in your town. And of course, there are so many people online. There are many groups on Facebook or other social media where people discuss things, ask questions, get answers or just laugh with each other, which is quite fun. Usually people there are friendly and ready to help, although sometimes they can be a little bit naughty, but I think it's okay. We all can be quite funny online. You might even find a gem buddy or a mentor who can help guide you along the way. And the last thing, be patient and kind to yourself. It's okay if something doesn't go right sometimes, you are still on the way. What helps me is thinking that if the others can do something, then probably I can do it too. I think role models are really important. So there you have it, some tips on how to manage your bass guitar journey as an adult. I hope you find these suggestions helpful and inspiring. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more tips and tricks. If you have any questions or topics in mind that you would like me to cover, drop them in the comments below. Good luck with your planning and with your practice, and I'll see you next time.